In part three of lecture seven, we discussed the buddy system, relocation, and relative and absolute addresses. Both fixed and dynamic partitioning schemes have drawbacks. A fixed partitioning scheme limits the number of active processes and may use space inefficiently if there is a poor choice between available partition sizes and process sizes. A dynamic partitioning scheme is more complex to maintain and includes the overhead of compaction. An interesting compromise is the buddy system. Memory blocks are available of size 2 to the k words, where k is greater than or equal to l and less than or equal to u, where 2 to the lth power is the smallest size block that is allocated, and 2 to the u power is the largest size block that is allocated. Generally, 2 to the u power is the size of the entire memory available for allocation. To begin, the entire space available for allocation is treated as a single block of size 2 to the u. If a request of size s, such that 2 to the u minus 1 power is less than or equal to s times 2 to the u is made, then the entire block is allocated. Otherwise, the block is split into two equal buddies of size 2 to the u minus 1 power. If 2 to the u minus 2 power is less than or equal to s times 2 to the u minus 1 power, then the request is allocated to one of the two buddies. Otherwise, one of the buddies is split in half again. This process continues until the smallest block greater than or equal to s is generated and allocated to the request. At any time, the buddy system maintains a list of holes, or unallocated blocks, each of which are size 2 to the ith power. A hole may be removed from the i plus 1 list by splitting it in half to create two buddies of size 2 to the i-th power in the i list. Whenever a pair of buddies on the i list become unallocated, they are removed by that list and coalesced into a single block on the i plus 1 list. The figure in the slide gives an example using a 1 megabyte initial block. The first request A is for 100 kilobytes, for which a 128 kilobyte block is needed. The initial block is divided into two 512 kilobyte buddies. The first of these is divided into two 256k buddies, and the first of these is divided into two 128k buddies, one of which is allocated to A. The next request requires a 256 kilobyte block. Such a block is already available and is allocated. The process continues with splitting and coalescing occurring as needed. Note that when E is released, two 128k buddies are coalesced into a 256 kilobyte block, which is immediately coalesced with its buddy. The figure in this slide shows a binary tree representation of the buddy allocation immediately after the release B request. The leaf nodes represent the current partitioning of the memory. If two buddies are leaf nodes, then at least one must be allocated. Otherwise, they are coalesced into a larger block. The buddy system is a reasonable compromise to overcome the disadvantages of both the fixed and variable partitioning schemes. But in contemporary operating systems, virtual memory based on paging and segmentation 
is superior. However, the buddy system has found application in parallel systems as an efficient means of allocation and release for parallel programs. A modified form of the buddy system is used for Unix kernel memory allocation. Before we consider ways of dealing with the shortcomings of partitioning, we must clear up one loose end, which relates to the placement of processes in memory. When the fixed partition scheme shown earlier is used, we can expect a process will always be assigned to the same partition. That is, whichever partition is selected when a new process is loaded will always be used to swap that process back into memory after it has been swapped out. In that case, a simple relocating loader, such as is described in the text appendix, can be used. When the process is first loaded, all relative memory references in the code are replaced by absolute main memory addresses determined by the base address of the loaded process. In the case of equal size partitions, and in the case of a single process queue for unequal size partitions, a process may occupy different partitions during the course of its life. When a process image is first created, it is loaded into some partition in main memory. Later, the process may be swapped out. When it is subsequently swapped back in, it may be assigned to a different partition than the last time. The same is true for dynamic partitioning. Observe earlier, we saw that when process 2 occupies two different regions of memory on the two occasions when it is brought in. Furthermore, when compaction is used, processes are shifted while they are in main memory. Thus, the locations of instructions and data referenced by a process are not fixed. They will change each time a process is swapped in or shifted. To solve this problem, a distinction is made among several types of addresses. A logical address is a reference to a memory location independent of the current assignment of data to memory. A translation must be made to a physical address before the memory access can be achieved. A relative address is a particular example of a logical address in which the address is expressed as a location relative to some known point, usually a value in a processor register. A physical address, or absolute address, is an actual location in main memory. Programs that employ relative addresses in memory are loaded using dynamic runtime loading. The appendix of the text discusses this in greater detail. Typically, all of the memory references in the loaded process are relative to the origin of the program. Thus, a hardware mechanism is needed for translating relative addresses to physical main memory addresses at the time of execution of the instruction that carries the reference. The figure shows the way in which this address translation is typically accomplished. When a process is assigned to the running state, a special processor register, sometimes called the base register, is loaded with the starting address in main memory of the program. There is also a bounds register that indicates the ending location of the program. These values must be set when the program is loaded into memory or when the process image is swapped in. During the course of execution of the process, relative addresses are encountered. These include the contents of the instruction register, instruction addresses that occur in branch and call instructions, and data addresses that occur in load and store instructions. 
each such relative address goes through two steps of manipulation by the processor. First, the value in the base register is added to the relative address to produce an absolute address. Second, the resulting address is compared to the value of the bounds register. If the address is within bounds, then the instruction execution may proceed. Otherwise, an interrupt is generated to the operating system, which must respond to the error in some fashion. The scheme shown in the figure allows programs to be swapped in and out of memory during the course of execution. It also provides a measure of protection. Each process image is isolated by the contents of the base and bounds registers and safe from unwanted accesses by other processes.